Oh boy, here we are once again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have another game for you. This will be a little bit of a different lineup, as you recognize some different names on here. Uh, Phoenix, of course, from a 3v3, Once Upon a Time, along with uh, Conran, I believe, who played Amun Ra in that game, as well as Detonator, Gogo, and Blade Runner. Locking it down for S2 on the Hellborn side. And we have the community team. Hopefully, a community team that will uh, finally get us some coins here. That's my hope. As you can see, that it was, I think, 8 to 11 in favor of the community uh, last I checked, but... I think they had won like three in a row. This is this is unacceptable, guys. You community people need to pick it up out there. Yes, Joining me uh, as per the last eight million hours. Some fan. How's it going? -la 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 Very Hi. impressive. I'm stunned by your amazing vocal range. Thank you. So uh, with that, we are off. This is a quick game because it is AP. I, uh. Let's go I'm, to Lion, shall we? We got Jerezai, we got Amun Ra, we got Witch Slayer, Tempest, and a Mr. Rampage on the Legion side. So, quite a bit of melee. Um, expecting Tempest in the jungle this time with perhaps Ra mid, although he's going bottom now, so I guess Rampage mid is actually pretty, pretty dirty. But on the other side of the, the Hellborn side, S2 side, more importantly, we got Magmus, Forsaken Archer, Chipper, Flint Beastwood, and a Parasite. All range. Parasite. Except for they didn't really point. love the, Our, the Parasite. No, no. Parasite, I yeah. feel like. And uh, Magnus. I've seen a lot of Magnus games, seen a lot of Parasite games, seen a lot of Amun Ra. Chipper. This will be the first time that we've seen yeah. in any of these games, so that's always exciting. Uh, any other new heroes? Tempest, I don't think we've seen yet. And Rampage, of course. I think he's been banned, actually, in a couple of our games, but not picked. So, yep. a couple new heroes. New blood. That's I nice am looking see. forward to seeing Forsaken Archer the most, though with that recent buff, which yeah. I feel is going to put her back in the competitive arena, I guess you could say, but we haven't I really seen so, too much of it yet. Because it'd be nice to see something that plays a little bit different, and uh, to quickly go over for like the two people that don't know of the changes, basically when she does her ult now, it does less damage, but it creates an image of herself that just uh, channels the ult so you're free to move around and auto-attack at will, so really, really like that change. That was one of the one things that you know, it jumped out at me when I read that balance patch as far as... It uh, jumped out to you because you're obsessed with Coddle. Ugh, that is true. Keeper of the Light, uh, back in the original Dota, had a semi-similar thing for one of his spells with his uh, old toggle mount. So, See, uh, the difference between that hero and, and uh, Forsaken Archer is that I Coddle sucks balls. Oh, yes. Coddle All you do is complain. Balls. God, you're just like a grumpy old man now. I'm curmudgeon. Curmudgeon is soul. Yeah, like you're, you're day. Gray good in your heart. Ah, Forsaken Archer getting really, really uh, aggressive here. He's gonna apply the mini or the mobilize to Witch Slayer, and I mean Witch Slayer. That's a really interesting play. I mean, he does not have any skeletons yet. I figure he'd wait at least to level two to start doing something. But bottom lane, we're gonna have Ra versus Magnus and Chipper. So Chipper is not Jerry solo Hopper. mid, which is very interesting. And Witch Slayer oh, is gonna get the kill God, on Forsaken Archer. Now, uh, the reason that I was questioning the aggressive play by Forsaken Archer is because as I've I'm sure you've heard a million times, you know. Uh, other than Succubus, I, I think Witch Slayer is. I think Witch Slayer and Succubus are the two best mids in the game. And we just don't see it. We don't see Succubus pick ever. And Witch Slayer is basically just a support shot. I mean, Witch Slayer is probably the most flexible hero in the game. You can play in any scenario, but mid is just. It's too hard. It's too strong. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's one of those heroes where we kind of wish, at least I wish, that we'd see uh, Witch Slayer be played in mid a little bit more often. Very powerful hero. Uh, and can continue to harass, especially once you start getting going with a level 2 mana drain. As we see, a nice job by uh, Witch Slayer not stepping into any stuns here. Um, it's a relatively even matchup when you just have that back and forth auto attacking, but once you kind of get going as Witch Slayer with all those disables and keeping your mana up, uh, I think that'll be something that will go overall in the favor of Witch Slayer. That, that will end. Yeah, and it's it's an interesting thing when you see a, a solo Witch Slayer, uh, what, what they actually skill, because a lot of times you actually see mana drain. But obviously in this case, it's not really that big of a deal to take away mana from Forsaken Archer. So, gonna opt for the miniaturiz miniaturization, which makes a lot of sense. Top lane, a lot of action. One more hit from Rampage will get the kill, but they will not dive that tower. Parasite in the meantime is thinking about ganking, but chooses not to. Flint is going to have a ridiculously hard time at top. That's a death lane, if there is a thing. Yeah. 
the ability of Rampage to basically put on a bunch of harass, and I mean, the nice part is once you get into melee range Rampage, you can just pop the heal of Jirazan and do a whole bunch of damage there, so. Uh, unfortunately, Rampage did not really man up and dive that tower. Kind of disappointed to see that. Although, it, I would imagine, would turn out not too great for him in that case. Um, that'll be a tough lane for... I think once to, uh, Rampage hits three, Flint's dead, because he's going to put a skill in Might of the Herd, and with that slow, it's just GG. If, wait, what did he skill? Oh, come on! Oh, no. See, people ask Level why too hard I rage. Strike. Like, seriously, why? Why? You put... Okay. We're gonna just take a breath here. Well, anyway, Sniper doing a good job, not necessarily in the item department, but at least guarding that bottom rune for which later he decided not to come get it, does not have a bottle yet. Uh, ended up picking it up as Chipper was making his way over there, being played by Detonator. Um, so we'll see if Tempest can kind of get going here. It's interesting to see with Tempest, you do have a decent combination of Omen Rob being able to throw it. You know, a good amount of magic damage, but other than that, they don't have that much in the way of AoE, so... Um, it'll be an interesting game for Tempest, I think, overall, because looking at the other side, you have, like, Chipper, you have... Yeah, did they uh, pick Tempest just so the other team wouldn't get it? I, I really... I, I'm not quite sure on that, but it seems... You know, there's a lot of AoE on the other team, and a lot of people that can uh, take off Tempest ult as well, so... Yeah. That'll be an interesting thing to see as this game gets a little bit later. Looking at the farm right now, you know, Tempest is doing a decent job at 221, so staying around that bottom room for too long didn't slow him down all that much. Um, his items are a little bit unusual right now, but that's okay. Looking at these stats in mid, uh, you know, Wishlayer is at 9 and 1, which is not that great as far as creep score goes, compared to 9 and 8 for Forsaken Archer. So Forsaken just a little bit ahead in that regard. As bottom, we see some action being. Man, a lot of pressure on Amon Ra. Unfortunately, the creep wave blocks off the rocket from Detonator. He misses another one, and uh, Amon Ra's gonna be able to get away. He does have a lot of regen right off the bat there, uh, so he should be able to recoup a lot of his health. Well, that's. that's I'm. Happy to see Amun Ra. Obviously, he's played a lot, but I'm happy to see him now that we we haven't been casting in a couple of weeks. I have not seen him since the one. What was it? One plus one point two health regen buff for melee heroes. It's something like that. So interesting to see how he fares in the early game. I mean, he already was a good early game hero, so I can only benefit him at this point. But Chipper in a lane with Magnus just isn't ideal by any means for another one of those heroes that, unless you have guaranteed kills with another dual lane partner. You basically want him to solo, just because he's so level dependent. Well, the hilarious thing is, in all honesty, they should be dominating that lane. You have a great stun by Magnus that can initiate. Almond Ra's not a hero that has that much health right off the bat before he gets some good items. And, I mean, you can see right now, he's at, like, 400 health. And if you can They're combine, scared of Tempest. They are, I don't but know why. They, yeah. They've been playing too like passive early, right and once it gets to the point where Tempest actually is a threat, as Tempest uh -oh. is going to get caught here. Uh, good job by Detonator hitting the, the oil, or whatever the heck it's called, on the Tempest. I think Tempest will probably end up going down. He does get his uh, Glacial Blast onto uh, Magnus. Uh, I don't so. think he's going down. Oh, yeah, it looks like he's going to oh, be safe. Chalice and up. from behind, there's Witchler coming in with a big ult onto Magnus. Oh, one hit, and there it is. Do manage to take down Tempest, but I think that Detonator is going to it. Pay with his life at this point. I thought you were going to get say my line. Oh, that would have been good. That's too bad. Good old Amun Ra trying to get the last hit there. Like, I, I, I ran through the whole jungle. Just give me, nah, nah. I Didn't mean, there's get so many the of your lines that you could use. You know, greed will be your downfall. I don't, I don't know. know. There's too many. It, there's so many that ends up messing with my head, and I end up going with. Just say dirty, dirty snowball. <laughs> dirty snowball. Avalanche. Yeah, God. Uh, I'm just surprised that, I mean, like, we're surprised at bottom lane, Amon Ra doing fine against a 1v2 chipper Magnus lane, which, all yeah. intents and purposes, should be a good aggressive lane, it's not one of the charge here top by Rampage, on Flint Beast, but oh hey, he got a, he got a level in Mind of the Herd, that's good, so he's slowing, but is it going to be enough, he's going to apply the protective shield, although that's really not going to do much against the tower, Flint Beast was going to pop his health out, he's going to get Horn Strike in the face, and he has Mind of the Herd yet again, but it's not going to matter, Heal is going to get the kill. And I don't know why they didn't that, do that earlier. Having level two and level three in Horn Strike, excuse me, really doesn't make any sense to me. Especially the fact that he picked up first item that he picked up in lane was boots, which you would think—I mean, it synergizes directly with your second skill. 
for people that don't again this is something that i don't know how like people just don't realize what the skill does it basically gives you damage passively based on your move speed and if you click it it will also slow people in general vicinity of you. so it's probably his best skill well i shouldn't say that but it's a skill you need to pick up early basically well, hey, get he did put three into his horn strike, but at least he has one in my other, so that's better than none. What I changes suppose. with horn strike? Is it just the cooldown? Maybe a little bit more damage? Uh, I think the it's not stun worth it really. time increases per level. Hmm. As we do have a miss stun by the Witch Slayer in mid. A little back and forth there as taking a quick look at their creeps, so it's 11 to 4 to 25 and 15. So Forsaken Archer is actually uh, really taking the lead as far as farming in that lane. I'd be curious to see if that really helps out. It's basically going to be Witch Slayer who really needs to either start farming towards a blink. I'm not a big fan of getting Striders on Witch Slayer, by the way, if you're in mid. Or Witch Slayer needs to start roaming around right now and putting some pressure on these other lanes, because sitting around farming isn't really going to be too good. Uh, you know, ended up going into that jungle earlier, helping out when Tempest was in a little bit of trouble, and they picked up two kills there. So just continuing pressure like that, and... Uh, well, yeah, speaking of that, we have a Parasite who picks up... Mm, candy see what it's corn. called? Ghost Marchers! Very early, or somewhat early. It really hasn't ganked, if you really think about it. I mean, I think he had one gank attempt at top, and Flint Beastwood, who should be getting rocked harder than he is now, still could yeah. use a lot of help as we need to get a charge here from Rampage on Flint Beastwood. Is he going to dive the tower? It looks like he's committed, and Jerzai is just going to sit there and farm for whatever reason. Does not use his oh. chains that bind you, ultimate, and will die to the counteraction there from good old Parasite. And this yeah, is another thing just... we didn't mention, is oh, Jiraziya is countered completely by Parasite. So that might have been one of the main reasons that he was... I don't know what order they were picked, but basically take off that shield, protective charm. God, you really kill me with these names. Oh, yeah. Mid lane when it's, it's not my fault now. Archer, I'm going to use it all the time now. But yeah, you do see a lot of pressure oh. being put on the Forsaken Archer. The chase is on here, but luckily those marches allowing Forsaken Archer to get out of range of any possible stuns, and now the tables might be turned as... Shipper tries to come in, but there's an ult from Tempest. A lot of back and forth here, and this is the combination they need to get off. Not the best placement by Amon Ra as far as the stun goes, but hey, you know, they may have needed three people that attempt this ult to get a kill, but they they did it. And uh, as we always like to say, uh -oh. you know, it's better to use your ult and get a kill than to sit around not using it at all. Is uh, speaking of that, Paris is going to run right into the jungle and try and take the ultimate up in a second here. He will. Oh man, great stun by Amon Ra, keep him out of range. He's Still needs to be a little careful here by Hammy Witch Slayer to not get in range of Parasite's ultimate, but Almond Roth throwing down a good sun to allow Witch Slayer to escape in that case. Uh, Magnus barely TPs away. Now one thing that I'm going to criticize and people are, are going to rage is we're going to have more action top. Flint Beast with almost dead thanks to the heal. The charge is going to end up getting the kill. But Witch Slayer, when you play in mid like this, this is an old Dota, I mean, again, I hate to bring up Dota, but it's an old Dota strategy. It's basically what it is. And when you do that, although there's no striders in Dota, obviously, you don't buy that regardless. If you're going to be mid, you need to take advantage of your farm, you need to take advantage of your levels, and get an item that keeps you alive, because you're still going to be a squishy piece of garbage if you don't pick up, like, Steam Boost is the usual pickup on him, if not even Boots well, of Travel. Well, when you're mid, so mobility. Uh, you get mobility, you usually trying to rush something like a portal key, and right. then you get something like Treads, obviously, or uh, Steam Boots. <laughs> yes, Treads and Steam Boots, absolutely. But yeah, Strider's not a big fan of that. Um, I mean, he's doing okay mid lane. Hasn't really technically gotten a kill on Forsaken other than the first Bloodlust, which is really just unfortunate for Forsaken Archer. A little too cocky at the beginning, not realizing that Witch Slayer is arguably the best mid in the game. Again, we don't really see that very often, so it's not surprising in any way either. Parasite's going to TP top to help out Flint, and that's going to cause Jerzy and Mr. Rampage to run away. Yeah, we might have some action up here at top as uh, Flint is maybe getting ready to come in with Magmus and that creep there with Parasite uh, hidden inside as of course then then our cuddly little Flint Beast would decide to just run around and run to a creep wave to Well, you out. can't do much with the Vulture Lord. I mean, the Cyclone's yeah, okay in some situations. Me. The auto well, attack, it, I think, is the highest of any of the, the creeps, but you really want a slower stun or something like that as Magmus is going to run right, and Rampage is going to run the Magmus. 
Well, as we always, we always joke about this, but Catman Champion, definitely one of the more OP heroes that you can get early with Parasite. OP uh, heroes? <laughs> OP neutrals. Yes, OP neutrals. You're welcome. Uh, have not really stumbled across him, although there's a nice Minotaur waiting for Parasite to pay a little visit. Um, I mean, overall, looking at the, the GPM, they really let Forsaken do a decent job free farming, but only farming 220 gold per minute, not that great. Paris is the top farmer in the game right now at 250, although it looks like he might be in a little bit of trouble with the hasted Jeraziah coming in. He's going to jump right into that Minotaur and get a stun off. We'll see if he can uh, make a run for it or not here. They need to be careful not to extend too far because the rest of the team could be coming to help out, but does not even matter at all as... Uh, Such a powerful to, skill, uh, and there's yeah. just nothing you can do. Such a, I mean, that's one of the tankier creeps, if not the tankiest, so... Yeah, and I think that people that maybe play at a... I don't want to say a lower MMR level, but just aren't as strong with, like, certain jungling heroes like Ophelia... Really, I mean, you can benefit a lot by playing Parasite, who's not really a complex hero to play... Oh but my has a god! Lot of ability, ...as I miss out in the kill there, as wow. apparently... Amun Ra, who still had his ult up, but does Well, up, Magnus uh, was very, very confident that he could kill Amun Ra, but with that ridiculous regen, which is 11.39 at 13 minutes the of the game, it's insane. Mid Tower is going to be taken down by Forsaken Archer, or technically the Hellborn, I guess. But yeah, I mean, Forsaken Archer is doing fine, other than that first Bloodlust death, obviously, and we're going to have Action Top. Wow, nice, nice showdown there from Chipper getting the kill on Witch Slayer, and looks like Jira's Eye will go down one way or another. Thankfully for the Hellborn team, Flint Beast would did get that kill. Looks like Blink was picked up on Tempest, but Flint also did fine. I don't know if it's more him doing fine, or the Legion team just not being aggressive enough. Because he's level 8. I mean, he died a couple times, I know. But it's not a big deal on somebody that sucks horrible balls early game anyway. And the fact that he's level 8, I mean, that's, let's see what we got here. Pretty much tied for second highest compared to the Legion team, so been just fine in a 1v2 that should never have been even considered a lane. I, I mean, if I were looking at that lane at the beginning of the game, I'd say it's not even close. Easy, easy kills over and over, even with Parasite's help. As we're more action. Oh, I can't on four heroes. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to get a kill on Chipper. And for second archer, it looks like is gonna perhaps not die. Okay, long range ult from which they're gonna get the kill. That is four dead. That is a huge tempest ult. That yes, obviously was a very good job. And in combination of uh, you know the tempest ult and then Amon Ra being able to get in there and do a whole bunch of AOE magic damage, that was a huge huge swing in the favor of our cuddly community team here, and they're gonna look to take down this tier one top tower. Those are the kind of things that turn around games. Uh, yeah, they're now up 11 to 4. The experience and gold lead is now barely tower. swung in their favor. It's still very even for the most part. And that was a huge team fight for Legion Team. Yeah, that, I mean, the fact that I didn't even know that Tempest had a portal key yet is the biggest thing, because he didn't show himself in lane. He just came out of nowhere and just happened to get four people in one ult. So big, big, big time ult. Awesome to see. You don't really see that. You'd think you'd see it more often, to be honest. I mean, I can understand the more competitive games, but still, games that we can't <laughs> aren't competitive at all, usually. Uh, I shouldn't say usually. Occasionally. Don't really ever see that. But again, we're still talking about a Flint Beast that's level 9, starting to get decent farm. Parasite, who's just starting to get started on... Just starting to get started. Oh no, I'm sorry, he finished the Codex. Okay, so he, he broke up the, the Ghost Marchers and made a codex, so that's obviously the usual way to do it, I just didn't realize he finished it. But that's going to be a big help, obviously, for a hero like that. Now Rampage is going to initiate on a Flint Beast, he's going to use his ultimate, bring him back. Nice! Wow. Dipper ult is destroying there. So good job by the Hellborn team helping out good old Flint Beast with not letting him die. To that mean, mean, mean Rampage. Flint Beast, uh, Witch Slayer is going to stun Chipper, and here's a Magnus ult. Is he going to get it off on top of I guess one player is good enough. You can kill him. Use your chalice. Two seconds. Two seconds. He can stun with chalice. Oh my god. Oh my. Yo! Wow. <laughs> so he uh, just joined the stun. I'm not sure if that was lucky or just the hell skill. Well, we'll call it skill. It's just the community. We love them. Sure. Agnes not really in any trouble as he uses a health pot. Flint Beast, on the other hand, he can get dove here pretty easily. Give him the credit. Yeah, for, for that one way or another, as man! 
over. Ah, oh, doing so much damage, but uh. I'm a little bit surprised he decided to overextend that much and not having his ultimate up. Uh, looks yeah. like, for the most part, that'll be that, but yeah, I think overall that worked okay in, in S2's favor, especially given that Magnus is really sort of caught, caught in a not good spot and made something out of it, so give him credit for that. Yeah, from that one fight that we were seeing earlier, it's Wish Thor gets initiated on here and absolutely destroyed by Parasite. If you look at the gold per minute and XP per minute, Pretty freaking even, and that's not something you see too often either. I mean, gold permit uh, obviously a little bit in favor of. Uh, well, let's look here. It's a little top heavy on Hellborn, but then I feel like I, I'm actually shocked that Rampage is the worst farmer on Legion. That's really surprising. Looks like Flint Beast is going for a Firebrand, most likely. Unless he goes for a Null Fire, actually against Amun Ra, that might be, not be too bad. The reason I was saying I don't particularly think that's that big of a counter to Amun Ra on a melee here is because the fact you won't most likely get as many auto attacks off unless you're ranged. So in this case I obviously that pickup would be great and the fact that he's ranged just adds insult to injury for, for Ra. Here as I have the ring of source, I don't know if you mentioned that. No, we did not, but you know, overall you can really just look down the list there and see well which slayer decided to get a mech, but again if you're going mid, like Astrolabe. Get something, yes, an Astrolabe, other than just general support, because he had a blink in. Tempest does not manage to get his ult up yet, but there it is! And the heal from Jezai keeping him alive, wow. unfortunately, not much follow up from Amon Ra quite yet, but man, he's doing a lot of damage. He's chipper managed to barely get his ultimate off, but not really in time to help out the rest of his team. Press is gonna hop into this little Skeleton King, and that's pretty much gonna be that. He needs to be careful not to get. Too cocky here is basically the entire Legion team Don't is get cocky. up, except gonna get rocky. Exactly, except for that Witch Slayer, and I think this is gonna be the end for Parasite unless it won't it's be. A charge up, it's got charge up. Yes, yeah, so I. Done. Oh come on! Oh my God, just die! He's hiding. Please. He's hiding, and the entire oh Legion my. team is running past him. I think they realize him. Oh, oh come oh. on! Oh. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? I know for a fact awesome. you have vision when you run by on that red side, so that that seems a little odd. But anyways, apparently Paris is going to be just fine, and the entire uh, Legion team is in shock. Hopefully, that's too trolling. It's too trolling. Are you sure you have vision? I don't think you do. That's a pretty common juke spot. I've seen a couple people use it. Well, I'm just saying, literally every single person ever will check that spot. So, anyways. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems. I thought you meant when you run by, you'll see him. Which I don't think it oh, Magnus ultimately coming out here as Rampage is initiating. It's going to be a kill on Tempest by Magnus, and in the meantime, there's a huge fight up here. Chipper taking a lot of damage. He's going to try to run away. Seriously, he's going to sick of an archer hold. Amon Ra is dead, so 3 for 0 right now. Not good for Legion. Oh, I'm sorry, 4 for 0. Jerzai also died in that skirt. What was I going to say? That, uh, not excursion. That's that's a trip. <laughs> that exchange. Thank you. Very good. I yeah, it that, it's kind of like just when you have a huge team fight for the Legion team, they decide to overextend and then get yeah. basically equally as destroyed. So, well, they didn't have uh, all their ults up. Yeah, that just wasn't a good move for them. Now it looks like the gold per minute is starting to. Uh, see, I'm, I'm just very as oh, can get absolutely. Man, oh, he does he not get absolutely destroyed because he manages to hop right into a sapling at the last second there, and then you I, have wanna, to feel so frustrated playing against that hero sometimes. I want to test something here. So I know that my gold per minute and XP per minute numbers are completely off because of a bug. Now the bars, what do they look like to you? I have no idea how I'd possibly describe that to you. Well, which side is it? They're substantially. Uh, in the Hellborn's favor. Okay, so mine's bugged. It's in the Legion's <laughs> favor, so that's good. So Excellent basically, basically worthless when it comes to stats. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yes, sorry. This looks like Tempest is starting to go towards a shrunken head. Not too much else picked up on the team yet. Amon Ra is working towards the Helm of Black Legion that will complete his general early game kind of tanky items, as he already has a Shaman's headdress. Other than that, not too much being picked up so far for them. Also, Helm of the Black Legion being worked on for Rampage, so they're going to be extra tanky when it comes to physical auto attacks. It'll be good, of course, against. Uh, who knows what Flint. he's building? He also, well, the Ring of that's Regen. True. That's true. Or Trinket of Resto. I'm never going. I'm not going to remember that. Just, one. just give up. Like, <laughs> nah. Just Ring of Regen. 
Anyways, on the other side of the map here on Hellborn, we have Forsaken Archer almost completing in Geos at this point, so farming very well. Taking like the gold per minute, 345 for Forsaken Archer, so definitely the top farmer in the game and doing a good job building off of the advantage she had in farm in the mid lane early. Uh, yeah, really fun. Beastwood hasn't gotten going yet. He's not farming too well, though he is above 200 gold per minute, which is better than he was before. Um, and it looks like you're going to have Chipper, who did pick up his... Oh, I'm going to call it something I shouldn't, but I don't know, his uh, 1200... Oh, oh yeah, he's going to be working towards a staff in the mask. Definitely. I did pick up the Glowstone. There we go. There's one of those stones. <laughs> Yeah, I always think of boosters. Astral I've not picked up on Jared's eye. That's going to help quite a bit. So, unlike the other games we've cast, other than the first one, of course, pretty even game for the most part. Yeah, Obviously, Hellborn has a better late game, but um, that's still quite a ways away. And it's a little bit weird because we always feel, again, it's kind of like any time that Tempest ult is up, the Legion can pretty much dominate a team fight. But other than that, when Tempest ult's down, when other ults have been down, they really struggled a lot more to have success in those same team fights. So it's going to be a matter of can Tempest continue to hit these great ultimates, uh, followed up by Amon Ra doing a whole bunch of damage, or you know if Tempest kind of starts to fall off or accidentally makes a mistake here, you know maybe this is something where the Legion can really pounce. And uh, when I say the Legion, I mean the Hellburn can really take advantage of that. Imagine how Legion would. B with somebody with a, like an AoE ult. Just one person. Yeah, so we have a charge nice. here going on the Parasite with the ultimate. Stunned by a Magnus spawned that up. There's the Chipper ult. Not really doing too much damage quite yet. Drizzai throws the heal and takes down that uh, Drizzai. Meanwhile, we do have a great ult coming in from Magnus. This is another team fight that's working very... actually pretty evenly so far. As uh, one second comes in from this uh, Forsaken Archer, not really getting too much done, but still at full health, so I should be able to keep some pressure on here. Need to be careful, actually, because uh, both Magnus and Parasite very low. And what are you? Oh my god! What? Pick on the mini map. Pick on the yeah, it's a little bit of a, a mistake there, as far as uh, probably making a misclick. So, after all is said and done, that honestly, it was pretty even for a while. As we actually have Rampage, just continue to put some some pressure up this mid lane, looking to charge onto Magnus. We'll see what happens here if uh, maybe Magnus, Magnus has can, a stun. Well, yeah, we'll see if you can time it right or just get too far away. As yeah, Ma or it's not a Rampage risk. definitely not going to go diving all the way into their base uh, just to maybe try and pull off a kill. Now, Forsaken Archer is very intriguing here because obviously she has Geos right now. And the question is, what does she get for her orb? Or what does she get for, you know, proccing? Because her, let's see what it's called, Split Fire, which hasn't been skilled up yet, which I'm assuming she will skill up at some point because it's absolutely awesome. Um, now, I've noticed Savage Mace is probably the best item you can get in relation to that skill because you can proc 3 plus 100 attacks with just one attack. It's just ridiculous. Uh, but you got to think of that skill, and we haven't really seen much of it because it was ignored for the longest time. And although it was changed quite a while ago, we still haven't really seen much of it. It's kind of like having a, a runed cleaver on a ranged hero. And I think that's extremely powerful, especially considering that usually the melee heroes are the ones with the farming mechanisms. Um, yeah, or, I'm sorry, Archer more, more of really taking utilize advantage that of to kick off her farm at this point in the game, too. Uh... Unfortunately, it's to go a different route, but you know, but oh, actually, yeah, the, the skeletons and uh, split fire could really, really get going. Maybe with some stacks in the jungle from some support heroes. Instead, we see, yeah, you know, chipper farming away there. But whatever. Uh, yeah, I think the two people that I, they need to get farm on right now is actually not Forsaken Archer, so maybe getting a Blink Dagger and Magnus as we have action in mid. What the heck? A little bit of an over here by S2, but there's an ult trying to get off, but oh. <laughs> man, Magnus just, really that was just too far for them, and man, Chipper's actually really pressing on to this team fight here, does not take down Witch Slayer, and Amon Ra's going to turn this entire fight, and not get a stun off in time, so unfortunately the Legion team can't take advantage of, uh, the Elbor team being really low, and meanwhile Parasite here taking a lot of damage. The uh, volley comes in from Sacred Archer, but can't do too much else. And that ult from Flint Beast would really not do that much damage either. Better so... not ulting Wish Slayer at that point. But yeah, I mean, back and forth, uh, these fights are fun to watch. I mean, Flint Beast would just sit in the back, 
pounding vaginas like he should be. And her second archer a little bit in the front, but the Geos has a little bit more survivability than Flint at this point. Uh, and that's another thing to talk about with uh, second archer's item build. A lot of people end up going for like a Frost Wolf, which is also excellent. Because it gives you a lot of tank ability and obviously the slow is ridiculous, especially when you times it by three. As we might have some more action here, uh, maybe not. Looks like they're going to be able to defend this be. tier one tower. Well, hopefully they kind of learned from their lesson hmm. that they didn't have Tempest up. Tempest did not use uh, his or her, whatever, his ult um, in that team fight. And I'm hoping what they're going to do is they're just going to say, okay, we have the Tempest ult still, so we didn't really blow anything. Magnus is take not Magnus. Uh, Almond Rock can still get in there and do a whole bunch of magic damage. You know, we, we basically still came out on top on that, so let's look to set up another team fight and make sure we, we put that pressure on as long as Tempest uh, has the ultimate up. Yeah, which is up right now, so they need to take advantage of that. And uh, looks like Ra's building a barbed armor now. Yeah, that's a little bit of a. I probably don't think I've ever seen that on Amon Rock. And again, going from last game, I love it. Well, well you obviously, just love you, you could get that on like any hero right now, and you'd be like, "Yeah, I, I love that pickup." It is, it is uh, a good pickup. Well, any hero that's gonna take a lot of damage is a good pickup. On the fact that raw, most strength heroes for that matter have a very low armor gain, uh, which is why I mean, usually strength heroes that's their biggest downfall is not having enough armor. So you have to invest in armor or pick heroes that give you armor, a la Mister Plague Rider. So it's not gonna be the worst pickup in that regard either. So the stats help, and obviously the active spell is going to help quite a bit, especially in big team AoE fights when you got a Magnus, you got a second arc. I mean, look at the, the other team, like we were talking about it. So much AoE, barbed armor is going to be huge against them. 80% of the damage, I believe it is, gets reflected, so it's a big pickup. I do yeah. like that. And right now, I mean, Amon Ra is 9 and 2, but really does not have that great of farm farming at something, what, yeah, like 250 gold per minute, so looking to see him kind of continue to take off as far as his farm goes. He can farm the jungle very well, he can farm lanes very well for spells, so a little bit surprised to see him struggling to pick up items in 30 minutes into the game. For second Archer by far right now is the top creep score in the game with 129 creep kills. Not too big of a surprise, but it is kind of surprising that she only has one in split shot right now. Um, she's going to go stats, which I can understand to a certain extent, needing a little bit more HP. Not really that helpful, but a little bit more HP for a little bit more survivability before she picked up that Geos, and now she's looking to farm it up a little bit, and probably wishing that she had a couple more levels in Split shot or split Fire, I believe it's called. Yep, Ooh, so... Shrunken Head close to being done on Tempest, 300 away. That'll just be another nice little thing there, although Tempest is, for the most part, hit some very good uh, prolonged ults this game, so hasn't had too much trouble getting those off, that just kind of ensures everything. And actually, As, uh, not really. If you really think about it, the silence from Parasite's ult goes through it, and Flint oh, yeah. with Hollow Point Shell goes through it. Um, Very true. I mean, it's not like the worst pickup, but the fact that he's already been getting off his ult to a large degree already, you know, it's a little bit questionable, but not too surprising really to get to see that picked up. Yeah, it looks Parasite. like Parasite. Yeah. He doesn't want to drag him near like any crease, but he doesn't have too much of a choice either. Does a good job just kind of having him hang out in the middle there, but Parasite's still going to make it back to group, but he's nice and safe. Meanwhile, you have a little Witch Slayer Magnus showdown with a Forsaken Archer coming in as well. The charge goes on the Magnus. He's temporarily slowed. We'll see if that does break it, and it does. So now Almond Ra is going to look to chase around with that double damage. Man, there's just action every which way. The ult comes after the second archer, not really hitting anything. Magnus goes down to that uh, rampage here, and now the rest of the Elborn team is coming in to uh, try and maybe make something happen, but they don't have almost any matter. Man, at this point, so we have the Amon Ra return, and he's gonna look to really do a lot of damage and see if he can change the tides of this battle. And does a great job taking down Forsaken Archer, who is not only tanky, did pick up a Shield Breaker as well. So they need to be careful here. You don't want this one, this one getting caught, who does not have the greatest move speed. Luckily for him, he does have that Firebrand, which gives him that extra little boost he needs to get away nice and safe. But I think that was another team fight where I'm assuming Tempest, yeah, did not get off. He uh, died. Like, I, I was just looking at the mini map, but he died near his ancients to Flint Beastwood, who, when I looked, was in the top fights. So I'm really confused how he died, to be honest. But he did die to Flint Beastwood. 
and it was next to the ancient. So he wasn't really near the fight at all, uh, which is unfortunate, obviously. Because that's the, you know that's the thing that makes or breaks your game, basically. Because you're not going to win late game, period. So you're going to need to produce some ults here, actually be in team fights. Uh, looks like he was just trying to finish that shrunken head. He was really really close. Now he needs another 300 to boot. Um, but again, it's not really the biggest pickup. Well, it's not that. And again, it's kind of one of those cases where you've had your ult for such a long time that you haven't really made any use of it. Like, it's yeah. just kind of sitting there being wasted, and then the Alma and Ron, unfortunately, they get stuck at the middle nowhere. His ultimate is not up, but oh, Wish Player manages to come in and he. Uh, oh, that was. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? At least they got a kill out of it from a Wish Player picking off Magnus once again, but not really the best situation for Alma and Ron to be caught. Yeah, he used his Bard Armor once he was like at 20% health, which obviously is not what you want, but a little, probably a little panic. Obviously it's a low cooldown, so it's not that big of a deal, but um, front of the damage taken before he he activated that, so not really taking full effect of the item, unfortunately. Uh, looks like Flint Beastwood is finishing up his Frost Burn. Um, how much is he away from that? He is about 400 away from finishing that. Can be quite, so he's obviously going to split that, I'm assuming, into the Frost Ooh, initiation on the rampage here. He's stuck by the neutral. Really doesn't react at all. Just maybe AFK farming or something, but he does die nonetheless. Um, we have the, the Geo Wolf, which I like to call. The splitting up of the Frost Burn, which is a, I'm a big fan of. And that's going to be excellent. I mean, the, the, the Frost Wolf in general is going to be really good against the rampage and, well, all the melees basically, but especially rampage who you. I mean, main reason he's not picked competitively is because you can kite him somewhat easily. Well, so what do you think about the chances for for the Legion team right now? Now, obviously, they they have that potential to get going in the early game, but it's now 35 minutes in, and they basically sat around not using the Tempest Lull. And it's kind of to the point now where Forsaken Arch is starting to take off. Flint Beastwood still has that potential of becoming a decent, sort of uh, more powerful late game hero as he does have Frostburn picked up. You know, this really doesn't look Deal all that good for the as, Yeah, you have Conver being good for This could be really a great chance as a charge is already going on to uh, yeah, a certain player. Invisible. Yeah, Flint Invisible. Ooh. It's, uh, <laughs> the original first kill on Amon Rock. Come on, Tempest, I believe in you! Oh no, it does manage to get all top and grab two people, which is better than nothing. At least he cast it, but they're not gonna actually get the kill on Chipper quite yet. And really just not the best bolt in the world. They finally oh! finished off that Chipper there. So good job by that. We'll see if they can maybe manage to chase down uh, Parasite. Charge does go onto that sapling, and now Parasite's in a lot of trouble. We'll see if uh, Tempest can blink around or just get the help. Blinks a little bit too far. Oh my god, look at these juice. And... Got juice. There's the eminent the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we're taking Archer, who actually gets a very good ult up. Does not manage to kill the uh, Witch Slayer. He's very close to dying there. Good job popping the Astrolabe and also keeping uh, him alive was the ultimate from Jiraziya, so... Alright, so if you're Legion right now, you need to regroup. Obviously, you won that fight. Try to push this power as much as you can. Congor is at half health. I don't think you have enough time to kill him. But the fact that you won that fight reasonably, you know, reasonably well with not the greatest initiation, to be honest. Uh, I don't think there are any buybacks either, so... Uh, but again, like you're saying, they need to win this in the next 15 minutes at most. And they need to start being a little bit more aggressive in the team fights now. Instead of sitting back, I mean, right now they obviously have to wait for Tempest Ult, but that's only a couple minutes away. So go heal, get a little bit of... finish up your items that you can, and then go back and initiate right away can't sit around and wait for them to Congor because they can just sit back in the neutrals and win the game, essentially. So you need, yeah. to, you need to act on it. it it's it's going to be one of those things where Chipper is going to pick up uh, his old staff soon. And that's one of those items that is just so core on him in a lot of ways just because of that slow. It is absolutely ridiculous in combination with his ultimate. So that's going to be a little bit rough for the Legion team. And then that Forsaken Archer, yes... I keep waiting for Forsaken to just like run into a team fight and walk away with like a triple kill or something, and it hasn't yeah. happened yet, but it has pretty good farm still, so. Level uh, 2 shield breaker now. Yeah, and farming hey. away at 332 gold per minute. Now, is it's, still you, top you're, of the game. you're walking a fine line here with Forsaken Archer on what. And again, I hate to keep going back to this, but the items are so crucial on this hero. Because obviously, shield breaker is great. It's one of those items that is probably better than its cost. Um, 
well, much better than this cost, obviously, but you're you're kind of forgoing the proc aspect of the split fire, which I feel is the biggest advantage of having split fire. As we have more initiation here on Rampy, he's taking so much damage. Nice heal from Jerry's, like, gonna keep him alive. And another heal there, and he from the Astrolabe, and ultimate from Flint Beast, which is not gonna get the heal, actually has very little effect, to be perfectly honest. Ross taking a lot of damage, will go down, I don't believe he has, oh he does have his ult, so it just came off cooldown. And we'll be back to initiate on top of somebody. Parasite the only one to die, make that Amon Ra, one for one exchange so far, so back and forth yet again. Now it looks like Legion is on the, uh, the run here, I don't know what Rampage is doing, he's like, eh, I'm gonna die by now. And he dies, and of course the Jersey dies anyway, so kind of a wasted death there, but gotta like the, the heart there from Rampage. Feeling that he could. He wanted to uh, turn you know, the change table. everyone's opinion after he failed <laughs> to man up at that, uh, yeah. that tower up at top at the very beginning of the game. And then here we have Tempest sitting there with full health and his ult up. So, how's it going, Tempest? He's yeah. gonna watch you for a while. So, again, the Forsaken Archer, I'm not saying Shield Breaker is bad by any means. Obviously, it's very good against any hero with Helm of Black Legion, which would be two. And they're both very important heroes. But, um, personally, Actually, I probably would have gotten the same, to be perfectly honest. But you're just—it's just good to know, like what you're foregoing with split shot, because you can proc three at once on the split, or the split fire. So things like—I mean, even like the chain lightning uh, thunderclaw, although some people really hate it, you're tripling your chances essentially of proccing. So it's pretty ridiculous. And of course, savage mage is probably the best one. But again, you are playing three to three people, the minus six armor, so it's not bad by any means. Yeah, we do have Tempest and Witch Slayer running over to Congo. We'll see if they can maybe get there in time. I I really don't know if they will have a great opportunity, although both Chipper and Magnus are so low. Oh. Uh, here we are going, man. Witch Slayer is going to This would be a good ult, too. Jeez. Would have been such a good ult. Jeez. But I'm glad he didn't waste it. That's true, he didn't throw it down for like a half second. Unfortunately for them, that is two kills, and it will also allow the Hellborn team to take the off Congor here. Uh, Congor is a little bit harder to kill these days, but uh, we'll still go down in the long run if you sit there whacking away at them for a while. And that's another big boost to uh, Team S2, unfortunately for those of you wanting some extra coins here, because uh, it's not looking good for the, uh, the Legion team right now. Yeah, I mean, they still have time. It's not like the other games where it was most definitely over and we were trying to make it entertaining, <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. But this is not over yet. Although the Token of Life is obviously a big hit to the nutsack for, for the community here, they they still have a chance to come back if given the right initiation. And looks like Soul's Bulwark actually picked up on, I believe it was Rampage. I could be wrong. Dead Nader's Somebody. now asking who wants to win an MSI motherboard, and I sure would, not gonna lie, as Rampage just yeah. runs in to charge for no reason. I want an uh, SSD. Send me an SSD. God, that'd just be a real dream. Just show up in your mail one day, like, oh hey, uh, no. nice little SSD I can throw into my computer and make it like a million times more awesome. But uh, for those of you that are interested in winning some of these various prizes, a lot of them have already been given out throughout the day, but you can still hop online, they just pull a name at random, and if it's yours, you basically win a cool prize. So, always a good thing. I could have sworn somebody picked up a Souls. I saw two chain... Oh, there it is. Alright, so it's Jared's Zion. Not quite finished with it yet, but only 300 away from the recipe, which is 10% more than it was before. That was a joke. Well, it's true, <laughs> but it was a joke. Fun piece for picking up a Slayer, so I'm not going to be splitting up that into into that a Geo Wolf I was talking about. Looks like Witchler is getting initiated on by Parasite. Is silenced at the moment. He's going to use a Tablet of Command to try to get away from this cuddly little Parasite. And in turn, Parasite's going to absolutely surround it. Look at that four man surrounding there. That was pretty. Oh pretty my! Oh no! Yeah. No. Oh, why? Why? Oh! I was just praising you for not using it, not wasting it, and you use it on lowly Mad Magnus. Um. Oh, uh, guy. I. We don't deserve. <laughs> we don't deserve to win after that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, That's like, that was a little depressing. Anyways, we do have Forsaken Archer taking decent amount of damage. The Glacial Blast come in for the stun here. And obviously, got rid of the Aegis, which was a good thing. Uh, Tempest needs to be a little bit careful, as well as Ahmed Ra, who's getting targeted by the money shot. They will manage to take down Flint Beastwood, and Forsaken Archer is going to retreat back to the base. So, Alright, Jerzai uh, healed himself. Look at all the his entire well, team. Well, 
sure. I, maybe it's one of those things where you accidentally was spamming the key too fast and did the, uh, the old double tap. Perhaps. Yeah, four dead, so maybe the Tempest Assault ended up not mattering that he wasted it. Yeah, and this uh, is another situation where they could have really on. pressed their advantage maybe a little bit more, tried to get some damage onto this tower. They still have a little bit longer before the majority of the Hellborn team is up, but I really don't think they're going to push. Uh, now with Magnus and Forsaken Archer throwing out all that damage. No, it looks like they're going to try anyway, but man, that is just very aggressive play here. As Almond Rock comes back up after using the ult, they do get a kill onto Magnus right off the bat, so... Not looking too terrible for them, but they really just don't have the mana. I mean, Tempest is just like AFK farming in top lane after <laughs> wasting his all in one person. Cop, cop, cop. <laughs> and uh, this poor Rampage, you know, he just gets stuck out in the middle of nowhere, which they're just stuns to try and get people that aren't chasing him to not so chase So this him. is why I'm not a competitive player. It's because I think of things after the fact. Like, I can't think of things on the fly. Who counters this? I just lock up because I'm not very clutch in those situations. But... Null Fire Blade would actually be amazing on Forsaken Archer. Not only get the three times the, the mana burn on three separate targets. Oh my. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. But also, <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. But Forsaken Archer, uh, Null Fire Blade, it also counters Jiraziah. So you're going to have two counters to the shield. The. Killing me here, buddy. Killing me. Protective Charm. Yeah. Do you um... want to talk about this item that was just purchased? Oh boy. Um, I was actually more curious to see that uh, Flint Beastfield was actually starting to get going this game, working towards his uh, Savage Mace, which will be a huge pickup for him and really allow him to catch up as far as general DPS goes. So, again, this is sort of the point in the game where you want to be kind of cautious if you're the Legion team. You obviously don't want to just throw the game trying to push too over aggressively, but you can't no. sit around and wait for the late game either. Alright, are you serious? What? I told you, did I, I didn't think I had to explain the item. I wasn't item. paying attention at all. But... So, Tempest oh, so picks up a Thunderclaw, yes. So maybe just Tempest has gone full out troll at this point. Yeah, I'd say so. Tempest jumps in, there's the ultimate, but he's gonna uh, get mini stun thanks to this sniper. Or the Flint Beast at all, he's gonna have to demolish. In the meantime, Parasite taking a lot of damage will drop in the end, so one for one exchange. Not the worst exchange you'll you ever want, but... I mean, Jerezai still hasn't used... Oh, his ult is down for 25 seconds. That is huge. That's going to hurt them quite a bit. Chipper is going to come out. He has staff master, as you can see by the slow. I'm going to pop in that bar down. I'm not really going to do that much at the end of the day. Which there did die. Magnus is going to stun man up there and kill the Rampage. So, last one to survive is Mr. Amunra, who still actually has his ultimate. Uh, if they can catch him, he's probably dead twice. Oh, oh boy. Oh, wow. Oh. I cannot believe he did not die to that money shot being thrown in there by... And Beastwood, so he's gonna probably be safe and sound, I would imagine, unless he decides to use happens. Ugh, whatever. Anyways, yeah, he'll be safe and sound him. one way or another. He just really had to take that brief, like, 0. 0.3 second shortcut up the cliff. You know, that was <laughs> very, very valuable. I thought uh, he was done with heart, but maybe he. I thought he just bought it, but I could be wrong. If so not, you're gonna see some away. pressure here, yeah. At bottom lane, there's three people that are 20 seconds or so, they should easily be able to get through. This tower probably took off the melee racks unless they get too passive, which I can't imagine they will. Tempest, you know, throwing down the uh, Thunderclaw, because... <laughs> Did it proc? Oh, no, I... Okay. I'm just still Wait disgusted for proc. that. That would be awesome if it worked on his elementals, though, huh? What if it took items from him? Obviously, be great. Maybe he thinks that. I don't know. Doubt it, but... Yeah, who knows. So, uh... You know, Sniper playing that Tempest. Uh, going Ooh. carry Tempest, which you see commonly. As the sun goes on at Magnus, he's absolutely shot by Amon Ra. Uh, we'll see if the Legion team really looks to press their advantage. As S2 getting caught out in the middle of nowhere. All... <laughs> okay, well they just decided to throw away two players for no reason, and... That's three players now because Rampage takes down. What are what the? I don't even know what's going on anymore. But if you're the Legion team, this is again the time that you really have to just push right down mid. Parasite's like, hee hee, I'm just gonna keep farming top. So you know, take advantage of that situation. Don't really know what happened there for Team S2, but they certainly got caught 
really kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and I don't know if they just were expecting that. They didn't know if their team was just like half falling back, half decided to go in, but. Buy that heart, that, Rob. Buy it. That was Buy not heart. the best thing in the world. Ooh, plant doing so much damage. He could probably, uh. Yeah, he is. He is gonna get yeah, charged, gonna though, finish. and, uh, Rampage does not have his ult up yet, so it should be safe and sound, but. Man, Parasite got himself into a little bit of trouble here. Lots of uh -oh. stuff going down. Parasite gets taken down this once and be all by himself just for a little bit until Magnus comes over to help him see if they can mount any sort of defense. As the Magnus ult is being channeled, goes in, gets a very good ult off edge and hit at least three of the four people. There is Jerezai ult doing some general health regen and Magnus is taken down. So again, you basically have Flint hanging out with one person and oh. another. Not That's a good ult though. That's a great. good ult. Oh, it's not wonderful. Right now it's good. It's good because they're going to take down the uh, Grand tracks, but still, I'm not necessarily sure if that was really necessary or not. But one way or another, we'll find out is now you have a first mistaken hey, Archer, the one that's really... Thunderclock Croc. Huh? Very yes. nice. Now Great he's just going to stand there. <laughs> and tap it. Yeah. Uh, Poor guy. He's going to have a lot of haters after this. Well... Anyways, looks like Wishla is going to try and make a run for it. I think, uh, wow, decent turnaround, at least picking off that chipper. And now you're going to have to see Forsaken Archer running back to base after having to use the Shrunken Head as well. So, uh, didn't really get themselves into too good of a situation That was a 10 again. second Shrunken Head, too. And I think we're going to see a game, just maybe here. And this is one of those games where you look at it and you say, there's no way that the Legion should have won this game. There really isn't. I mean, you have a Tempest that's like semi-throwing, you have a Rampage who, you know, I, I, he plays aggressively and doesn't bait his team, which is always a plus, but sometimes gets himself into a lot of trouble. Um, you have a lot of issues here for the Legion team, and they don't have that great of a late game. And here you are, with a Forsaken Archer 50 minutes in, top farmer in the game. They're still losing. You have a Flint Beast, but he's a very strong carry. And uh, got going kind of mid to late game as far as this farm goes. They're still losing. So oh, this... I wouldn't say they're losing. Well, they've lost a melee round. So they're. I don't necessarily think that means they're losing, though. Well, that's a completely ridiculous statement. They're losing they're because it's forty-three to thirty, and they're down a racks. That doesn't mean that they I... can still. I mean, if I'm looking at these teams currently, I'm saying Hellborn's winning. Well, I agree because they have two late game carries. That was the whole point in the first place. I just feel, I mean, S2 is throwing, but I'm not that Yeah, so they're stuck in this awkward situation where they should be dominating this game at this point, and they're really not. So they they need to, to not make these sort of mistakes, and I think they, they, they pull together as a team and just kind of push something, and uh, really allow their two carry heroes to just turn on auto-attacking, they still have a good chance of... Uh, the fact that they have so many counters for the opposing team, S2 does. I mean, even, like, let's say they all group up minus one or maybe two people. Like, let's say Tempest catches three people. Chances are, one of the person, one of the people that's outside the ult is going to be able to cancel his Elemental Void, which I had to look up the name, of course. Uh, I mean, you got, you got Flint Beastwood with the Hollow Point Shell, and he's going to have Savage Mace very, very shortly. He's going to have Initiation here, bottom. Chipper using his shrunken head. Actually proccing a couple thunderclaws, but and here actually is Witch Slayer and Ra gonna help out here with the initiation on the Forsaken Archer. Forsaken's gonna have to use his shrunken head. Trying to get away. Nice slow from Chipper. Gonna basically cut everybody off there. That's most likely gonna be that. Um, but then they also have Parasite with you. So I feel like they have so many counters for everything, including Jerezaya's. Yeah, so and I, and all technically. You know, for the most part, that's still went pretty decently for the Legion team. They still have the Tempest hold up, and they made uh, Forsaken Archer use her Shrunk Head once again. So it'll be a time for that. Sure, sure. As we're going to have a Magnus Salt coming in, not really the best, but we'll do a lot of damage to that Witch Slayer. Meanwhile, we have Raw chasing down Chipper up there at top. At bottom, Tempest gets actually taken down, and here's what this was starting with the auto attacks. They're going to do a lot of damage. We'll see if uh, between Flint and that Forsaken Archer, they can really turn this battle around. And the auto attacks continue. Amon Ra comes back up, and there's the Forsaken Archer ult not really hitting anyone. The uh, Legion is going to have to look to fall back here. Unfortunately for Jerezaya, he's the one that probably will end up getting left behind. Uh, we're going to have a long chase, most likely, as 
Man, they can actually turn this around by the yeah, they could. Team. They could. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, this Rampage comes in from behind. There's two kills. Let's see if they can finish the job here. Come on, Rampage. I believe in you. He let's, has everything. Let's he has do literally it. literally every spell. I've he got... Yeah. <laughs> so he could have just charged, but okay, he ulted. Now, they can Rax this right now. They can... I, I, I would just go up mid, finish that mid. I don't know why. But I literally, like, where was Rampage? I don't know where the he rest was. Of the I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no he must idea. be dead. I don't know where the heck he is. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, just riding down the river is Rampage. <laughs> and it's right like, oh, wait, he has full face. health, full mana. That's his ult up, you know? Yeah, and no buybacks from him. So he didn't. Yeah, it's he like didn't he died in a fight. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. So two up for Hellborn. And that's only two going to be up to another. 30 plus seconds, so if they can archer and chipper, you're basically the last line of defense here. As wow, Legion's actually gonna initiate now, uh, but not really anything can happen there. They're gonna easily get these racks. Uh, I would go to the melee racks mid right now. I would basically ignore it. Although chipper places well pretty nicely on top of Ra and Jeroziah, but Forsaken Archer, my goodness, woman. While Rampage rapes Mr. Chipper, what's going on here? Oh, uh, uh, I all of a Legion's sudden, winning. Oh, hey, Mr. Helmer's winning. Hmm? Hmm? They were in your <laughs> face. <laughs> but yeah, they're gonna destroy right the now. Legion Tower. Come on. Now, for some reason, I had no idea. I don't know why I didn't pay attention to this. I thought they had taken out the melee racks to the range racks in no. mid. I thought I think they're gonna finish the job properly at this point in time. Yeah, yeah Parasite going in oh, trying to do something. Armor. Did steal the barbed armor there. <laughs> I was looking at his items going, yeah, he doesn't have that, but he's now, I'm assuming, going to go down to wow. okay, that kill. Well Let's played. Shout out to Rashid Wallace. Oh, Finally Blade coming Arden. back. Finally coming back and actually working as a team, having team fights, which is basically the bread and butter of that team. Yeah, so a uh, big shout out to the uh, community team. We got Spopovic. God, why? Why are these names that I can never pronounce? Spoopy. Rashid. 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 <laughs> I want to go with Rashid because I'm a big Rashid Balls fan. Uh, Binho. Bin Sniper. And. Whatever. Sniper DK. underscore. And Rude. I'm going to go with DK. Donkey Rude. Kong. Country. 64. Wow. Boom. S2 definitely got too confident, though. They, they ended up throwing it. And Legion actually took advantage of it. So, well, well played by them. Not much else to say other than that. I mean, Jerezai is pretty freaking farm now. He has Demonic Breastplate on top of the Barrier Idol. And the Astrolabe from way, way long ago. And it looks like Tempest actually finished the Charge Hammer, which of course is a core pickup on Tempest, so good to see that he's done with that finally. And for second Archer TPs to the top tower, but to no avail, unfortunately. The tower does go down shortly after. Yeah, the usual idiom here is that once your T-Rex down the game is essentially over one way or another. Uh, we'll see if S2 decides to be a little stubborn here and, uh, well, you know. I mean, Flint basically has MK, or so oh, here, right yeah. now if he wants so to So is this it. the part where the Hellborn's still winning the game? Or? Hellborn's winning, bro. Hellborn's uh, winning. Just making sure. Uh, Sniper, playing carry slash whatever the heck Tempest, uh, does have the ult up once again. So I think you're just going to have to see the Legion team regroup, see Rampage decide to charge all the way across the map, and then we'll have our final team fight. Yeah, very tanky Legion team, by the way. Frostwolf on Amun-Ra. Just going to aid in that. I mean, he has 3895. I think we're going to see a little G-Draw thing going on, or...? Uh... No. Not yeah. There's no DRG numbers in here. Yeah. Sure is. Oh, and Ron basically hit him. Yeah, funny. It's four people on the Helper team, and Will use his ultimate as the rest of the way to pass. We're going to see. Well, I mean, Tempest is nowhere to be found. Oh! Barely manages to get killed, anyways. Nice attempt by Witchler. You know why it's not over? Two uh, reasons. Here we go again. <laughs> Two reasons it's not over yet. One is the throwability of the community, and second is Doombringer on. No, you know what? I have faith, okay? I have faith. That the community we've seen, members okay, no, will not let We've us seen know. so many throws this game by both sides, back and forth. Like, oh, we've won this game. No, we just threw it. Oh, we've won this game. No, we just threw it yet again. So, it's a back and forth throwing action. Obviously, two racks down is going to be very, very, very tough to win. As, wow, Jerezai now has a sword in the high, so maybe he's going for. I figure he's going for mock, actually, although it would be pretty useless at the 60 minute point. Yeah. Um, 
seems like an odd time to throw down a Doombringer of any sort, but you never know. This is the community. Maybe that's what'll happen. He'll get a Doombringer and then die, and then Flint will grab it and backdoor <laughs> the entire. That's the uh, great thing about base. Flint. You won't get hit by any towers. You can backdoor without any issue. <laughs> hold off the creeps. I haven't really ever seen that actually in Han. Uh, a Flint beast with backdooring heavily like that. Usually it's like somebody that has some escapability, you know? Yeah. So, damage isn't really that big of a deal, I guess. Yeah, this is just a little bit of a strange game overall, as now the Illusion team has gone for the, of Turn course, events. infamous double demonic breastplate yeah. strategy that we, we see quite frequently, as Ooh. Parasite's gonna get caught out of a little bit of trouble here. Meanwhile, the charge on Rampage decides to go straight in on Forsaken Archer, dragging him all the way back to the best of their team. There's the old Honda Rampage. Rampage takes a lot of damage from the auto attack. There's an ult coming down from Chipper, but an actual decent Tempest ult for once catches three people, and now I think this is maybe the point where you're gonna look to see Cheriziah, Witch Slayer, all the rest of this here is continue to put the pressure on as Chipper gets picked off down there. By that bottom rune, we'll see if they can actually catch up and do anything. Does not look like it at this point. Well, that's interesting but to see how little effect that slow has from Sheriff's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's nowhere near that. I mean, obviously, Dota is much slower paced, so that might have something to do with it. But now that he's being picked, I don't think any buff is really in order. That's really not a skill you need to. If you're in a solo lane, it might be a good idea to pick it up, but just. When people have upgraded boots at this point of the game, it's interesting tower. to see how little. Effect it has. Never yeah, really and it's nice to see uh, Sniper with the Tempest actually getting back to his uh, early ways, throwing down a uh, decent ultimate, so. Thumbs up. Clint Beastwood didn't feel like he was doing much damage, surprisingly enough. Now, I would I would venture. Uh, okay, I, this is what I would do. If I was Hellborn, and again, big, bigger risk you take when you're down, the better. I would go get myself killed as long as I have enough to buy back. Get the Doombringer on Forsaken. Or I would have just built the Doombringer on the Courier and let Forsaken Archer take it, because it can do three times as much damage, essentially. Yeah, unfortunately uh, for them, they weren't necessarily thinking ahead quite that far. You know, Flint, Flint is not like a bad hero to have it on, by all means, but... That is all the question marks. The Legion had destroyed a Hellborn Tower. Yeah. Because Forsaken used her all for no reason. The spirit comes up, dude, on top of everybody! Not really gonna do that much damage at the end of the day. They're very thankful they have a bunch of shrunken heads. Which lane is gonna get killed on top of that chipper all along with Amun Ra is gonna go down very shortly. But alas, it doesn't matter because the creeps will finish off the shrine. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a shrine. Yes. So I think that was like our first kind of hour long semi close game. Legitimate game. game. And Legitimate. I'm still a little bit shocked that S2 managed to lose that one.